Hello everyone, Draj here. Welcome back to RuneScape update video. Uh, today it's not too much as far as the updates go, but there is a good amount of patch notes. For this week's updates though, there's a few new spells and then there's a few more crafting options. And it's to fill out, like they mentioned at the top here, it's to fill out more of the missing gaps in gear and skill progressions. And it actually does decent. Um, I'm not too minute sure if a lot of people will be using it, but it's not bad. All right, so we have silver jewelry and silver enchant jewelry enchantments. And it's for Opal, Jade, and then the Red Topaz. Okay, so for the Opal enchantments, we have... Um, the Ring of Metamorphosis, which is a chance for double XP when catching butterflies barehanded, comes starts with 10 charges. Uh, Headhunter Sacrifice is a bracelet, a uh, chance of on assignment slayer kills to count as double for no additional XP, 25 charges. And Feather Fingered Necklace, chance to take no damage and avoid stun when caught thieving, 10 charges total. Amulet of Bountiful Harvest. This one's actually a pretty good one. Uh, chance of conserve seeds when planting in an allotment. 10 charges. Okay, for the Jade. There is the Ring of Respawn. Teleports to unlocked respawn locate points. Uh, there's 5 charges. Frame Tier Bracelet. This one will be pretty good. Instantly builds a single temple wall in the Shades of Morton. Two charges. Traverse necklace teleports to the will. Uh, tele <laughs> teleports to Wizard's Tower, the outpost north of Ardone, or south of Eagle's Eyrie. Uh, five charges. Botanist amulet chance to create higher dosage potions. Five charges. Uh, Red topaz. Columbrarium ring. If I'm saying that right. Increased chance to receive the Sun Spear effect when killing Vire Watch. Uh, charge will be expended per kill, whether or not effect occurs, and it has 50 charges. Headhunter's Thrill Bracelet. A chance for Slayer kills to not reduce the assignment count, but still award experience. 25 charges. A necklace of Gluttony. Food eaten gives 100, well, plus 100 life points. Extra. So that if, like if he heals 200, it'll heal 200 and 100. Well, if he heals for 2,000, it'll heal for 2,100, sorry. Uh, enlightened Amulet teleports to the Nexus, the Desert Bandit Camp, or south of the Graveyard of Shadows. Five charges. Uh, there's just a reminder that the Celeste's Endgame quest is coming up. And the requirements are Children of Maw, Nomad's Elegy, Kindred Spirits, Heroes Welcome, One of a Kind, and The Death of Chivalry. Uh, they also have mentioned, you know, if you have yet to experience the storyline, uh, if you want to, you can get to the Missing Presumed Death to get it started. Uh, there is just a little bit more for that. Otherwise, we got the uh, live streams at 1700 on the 13th. There is 2016 review and poll results. And on the 16th at 2100 game time, there is an update with mod, uh, update preview with Mod Shawnee. Uh, there's community goodness. There's the J Mod post box. The Christmas competitions. And <clears throat> the Christmas post bag returns. Now on to the patch notes, and there's a lot of them, so please bear with me if you, you know, want to hear all of these. <coughs> okay, so let's get started. The graphical is the lookout of Eke no longer has an incorrect zombie head in chat after curing him. Players will no longer float while standing on specific spots in Port Serum. An issue with the satyr legging stretching when certain weapons has been fixed. The Black Titan 
example with Black Knight Titan now animates when fought in Dominion Tower. Missing architecture has been re-added to Patrodomus Beacon. The door to the stockroom in Wyden's food store now opens the correct way. White knights with outdated white plate armor have been graphically updated. White knight partisans in the Falador Castle have been well, has been at, updated to wear red trimmed armor instead of initiate blue. A guard north of Falador south oh well, a guard north of Falador, south of the Grim Tales Tower, has been graphically updated. The Falador guards Billy and Bob, who appear in cutscenes during the Garden of Tranquility, have been graphically updated. An animation issue with Vanstrom hanging in the air during Blood Bomb has been fixed. A uh, cave opening has collapsed, hiding a prominent hole in a wall within the underground pass. Arcase's War Mace is now held correctly in Legacy mode. The zoom and position of enchanted emeralds in the inventory slot has been amended. The samurai cooking animation has been tweaked, so the sword is sheathed correctly. A stretching issue in Synivia. Synvivia? During the love story quest has been fixed. A uh, split seam at the top of the cursed reaver scythe has been fixed. Uh, the cursed reaver scythe should now fit your hand correctly. An issue with desert band the chat head model has been fixed. A rare occurrence of wood cutting animation not playing in Clan Citadel has been fixed. Uh, Camille's outfit is now far less transparent as in the Rambuki skin weaver's outfit in the Polyport Dungeon. Z bias ha well, Z bias has now been fixed in NXT Client for the Elemental Workshop 4 Cosmic Puzzle. Disappearing sh scenery in Demonheim has been fixed. Skill D and D's and mini games. Ceratum and Bruise now all show the Mount Day heel visible well, visible on mouse over. References on tortoise shell bowls have been correctly have been corrected to tortle shell bowls in the crafting skill guide. Slimy eels now give the correct amount of XP when caught. Stomp will now always drop two crystals in dungeoneering. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he was doing that a lot lately where he was just not dropping anything. Agility shortcut in Port Plasmius, well, Pasmius, in now shown in world map. An issue with hint arrow pointing to the wrong location for stealing creation in minigame. Uh, players can now enter Guthixian catches after already completing one today. Gatherer's rings inside Dungeoneering now once again work with fishing and farming. Go on, spend some tokens. Boss rotations and D&D's weekly and monthly resets are now auto-tweeted. An issue where stoves in Varrock Palace Kitchen were not allowing food to be cooked has been fixed. The portable Fletcher bonus now functions correctly when tipping bolts. Tipping bolts will now give you the chance to receive the Fletching Pet. Making Ascension Ammo will now activate bonuses such as Silverhawks and the Skilling Backpack. An issue with the Hearts Instance message. What about it? <laughs> Access to the Empty Throne Room has been added to relevant skill guides. Evergreen trees on the White Wolf Mountain now correctly give sap. Augmented Superior Morgans, Jaguarlands, and Throne Axes may now be disassembled before they've completely run out of charge. Quests, challenges, and achievements. The impressing of the locals mini quest is now a novice difficulty quest awarding one quest point. For those who have completed the mini quest do not need to complete it again. This change was made to increase the visibility of the quest by extension the way to access the Eastern Lands. Uh, typo in Azar. Is Andrew's 
supposed heart of the stone quest has been fixed. Other, a gargoyle trapped behind some rocks in the West Wilderness Ruins has been rescued. A uh, typo in the Master Camouflage Outfit's in teleport interface has been fixed. Scopulus Hunt range has been increased. The Rise of the Six and Train mechanic has been changed to allow for fewer than four players in since creations remains unchanged and, st we st and will still require one of your parties to spend a bar's, to a bar's totem. As such, you can now play this contact between one and four players simply standing on any of the platforms with that many people. Players will let you begin. Araxer's web shield will now correctly reflect damage after using an instant kill dart. A uh, fix has been put in place as an attempt to fix Araxor's Raxor's delayed animation on path 3 when charging at the player. The Dragon Mace special attack now increases the special attack accuracy by 25%. The Dragon Mace special attack now correctly deals between 1 to 300% damage. Once the last pedestal has been clicked in the key Queen Black Dragon encounter, players will no longer be affected by time stop. Players are no longer able to walk into a cart on Tylet. Uh, purchasing player import boot scrolls or well, boot slash scrolls <laughs> boot slash gloves scrolls from Bonnie no longer require 85 defense. The defense requirement is still in place for wearing them. So you can make them, you just can't wear them if you have the until you have the defense level. That's how it should be. You can now travel to Uncharted Isles from the Quartermaster in Port Serum if you have previously visited at least one Uncharted Isle. Most water barrels in the Ark now function as water sources. A gnome hut and Talet colony no has a gnome hunt at the Talet colony it's supposed to be now has a lamp examine instead of no has it's like a grumpy cat meme right there a typo in the Lao Tawa Let's uh, own mini quest has been fixed animation timings for placing and checking turtle traps have been shortened slightly hunting turtles should now feel closer to box trapping you can now teleport from the Ark Islands using the Grand Tree seed pods without complaints that you're underground. Picking up noted and unnoted items will no longer add a duplicate entry for the same item in Rune Metrics loot window. A typo in Nemi's Forest Dead Monk has been fixed. Using the ancient hymnal on the Falador Castle altar now checks for all ranks and genders of White Knight. A nothing interesting happened message that appears incorrectly when you use that will use empty bucket on a sand pit in Unil has been removed. Dialogue boxes no longer instantly close if an ability is active after killing Snothead in the Land of the Goblins. Held familiar scrolls are no longer lootable by Iron Man when an enemy is killed. Follower pets will no longer show food bonuses in the pet interface as only legendary pets can eat food. An issue where, where uh, issue where the warning message was blocked by targeting information when fighting a gelatinous abomination without spiked gauntlets. A typo seen during Virago waterfall phase has been fixed. A uh, typo in the Boat to the Ark reward chest post event has message has been fixed. The White Tree Shoot now has a left click to water option. Can no longer apply a weaker anti-poison effect if a stronger effect is already active. Several spelling errors for the re word received have crossed out received corrections. Just the little spelling error. Some unneeded spacing has been cleared up from the skill guide. Renting and purchasing the Wealth Evaluator will no longer disable keys. 
Mr. X has created a notice board to commemorate some legends of the Iron Man community. Silverhawk boots can now be recharged while wearing them. An issue of take all option on the loot and reward crates has been fixed. Some leftover Halloween decorations have been removed and auctioned off at the GE. Uh, Gregor Vic Gregor Vic's blade juggle attack no longer has a chance to deal damage when it shouldn't be able to. An issue where opening a treasure ch uh, opening a chest in Treasure Hunter could cause a multiplier timer to keep resetting in the God Wars Dungeon 2 has been fixed. Light creatures familiar options will no longer reappear after completing a lap of the hyphen agility course if you have hid familiar options ticked. Buying the Revenant Drop Enhancer from the DM Reward Shop with a full inventory will no longer charge your DM points. A problem with buying multiple items at once from a shop. I guess that was fixed. It doesn't say what they did, but I'm guessing that fixed. Amulet of Forsaken can now be repaired into the new version, allowing it to be traded again. The correct Revenant pet will now appear when overriding a familiar. So that's all this week's updates. There wasn't too many. It's December. Usually there's not too many. Uh, there's just a lot of event kind of weekends going on. Good amount of patch notes, but thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, later guys.